up? Oh, there you are. Yo, what's good, bro? 884 Bay. Welcome to the podcast, homie. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. I like the background, too. I, lo- I love what you got on the wall. Appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, So I discovered you from your uh, artificial EP. Um, You're from Detroit. The first thing I want to ask you is uh, let everyone know uh, where in Detroit you're from and how it was growing up in the area you grew up in. Well, I was, um, I actually live 20 minutes away from Detroit. I said I'm from Detroit because I know you don't know where Mount Clemens is, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like a small town, you know, you can probably drive through there in about five minutes. So, like, yeah, you know, everyone knows each other there. It's it's not the best place, but yeah, it's chill. Okay, cool. Um. So when you started growing up, right, um, in your household, uh, what kind of music was being played, like, around you as a young kid, like, when it was out of your control, and then, like, maybe middle school, high school, like, then what were you listening to on your own? Um, let me see. So around my mom when I was little, I was listening to a lot of, like, old school pop and, like, R&B, like, Michael Jackson, New Edition, Fantasia, stuff like that, and then, like, my dad, he used to make CDs, so um, I would hear, like, a lot of, like, he was always up to date with the new stuff, so, like, early 2000s stuff, like, like, Wiz Khalifa, uh, E-40, Big Sean, stuff like that, Kanye, and then on my own, I started, like, middle school, I started branching off to, like, different genres, like, heavy metal, uh, indie pop, stuff like that, and then, like, when it came down to rap, probably, like, Uzi, Future Thug. Um, I was I was a big Fetty Wap fan. Like <laughs> I was a big Fetty Wap fan, and yeah, and definitely Chief Keef. Yeah, I'm from New Jersey, bro. So I'm I'm with you on that Fetty Wap train. I I uh I remember when I was like in middle school, going to high school. We I watched his little whole career up until he dropped his last album, and now he's in prison. Yeah, free Fetty, man. Free Fetty. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he. His music's great, even his last album. Yeah. So um how how old were you when you first had the idea? You're like, okay, um, like obviously I like music. What when, when was how old were you when you were like, okay, I want to start creating? It was probably about like probably sixth grade, seventh grade. You know, I met this I met my friend at a four phobia. I met him in sixth grade and he was freestyling to like some females and stuff. And, you know, I was jealous on, like, some little kid shit. I was jealous. So I was like, yeah, I can freestyle, too. I couldn't freestyle, though. So, <laughs> so yeah, I just started making music to, with him. So, yeah. So um, you go from freestyling with him, right? How long is it until you start dropping music online? Because there's a lot of – there's a big difference between, you know, fucking around with your friends. Yeah. Freestyling for girls or in school and shit. And then – because once you put your shit online, you know, anyone can say anything they want about your music. Um, I think well, at first I was just hopping on his songs and he would drop them, but I started like probably a year after that, I started like dropping seriously on SoundCloud, but then I took like a, a long break and then I just started dropping music again, like last year. Yeah. I mean, you, you've been pretty busy this year. Um, you have your artificial EP. That's how I discovered you. That shit was dope. I really love that. Every song was good. There's no skips on that. And I'll vouch for that. Um, and then you dropped nine other singles. And since we locked in this interview about a week or two ago, you dropped um I Don't Make Detroit music, which is fire. That song's yeah. great. Um, talk about your work ethic. So you say you took a break and, and now you started dropping again. You you dropped a EP and nine singles this year. So talk about your work ethic and um why mm-hmm. you came back so hard. Um, there's still some times where I don't like, I'm not going to lie. I don't record every day. Like there be times where I like take a three week break and stuff, you know, cause when I'm, when I'm recording stuff, I want to, I want to feel something. You feel me? Like, so yeah. Um, yeah, I would say my work ethic is, it's there for sure. So, um, who would you say some of your influences are when it comes to making music? Um, Uzi would be the biggest one. Uzi, um, Future, um, Kendrick, Wayne, 
I got my flow from Wayne. Wayne and Kendrick. They definitely helped me with my flow. Two and goats. Then, yep. And then um Nicki Minaj definitely in there. Yeah, that's my, dope. I, I like how you give her credit too, because a, a lot of male artists, when they talk about their influences, they don't like to throw like a female artist out there. Yeah, my my sister used to play a lot of uh Nikki at my dad's house. So Yeah, that's dope. Um so you're fully independent right now, correct? Right. What do you think you need most? Um, like say if you can name like one or two things, what do you think you need most to take your music to the next level? Um probably like exposure, definitely exposure. Cause like where I'm from, there ain't no big rappers out here. Like so definitely exposure. It's the closest is Detroit, right? Yep. And then Detroit, do they, do they, like, if you say you told, like, cause if you come out as a big artist, right. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you technically allowed to say you're from Detroit or is, are people in Detroit not like. Yeah, I could, I could say that, but I want to be original. You feel me? Yeah, no, I completely get that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so I ask every artist this, no matter how famous they are, how underground, if you could have three dream features, dead or alive, who would they be? Um, first one would definitely be Chief Keith. You can never go wrong with a Chief Keith feature. Yeah, hell yeah. And then um, probably Keisha Cole. Me and Keisha Cole could hop on some R&B stuff like some stuff that sound like the stuff off artificial that's a and dope then, answer yeah no no one's ever said her yeah and then um probably the beatles that's fire bro beatles yeah I love that's the fire no no one's ever said that answer either <laughs> yeah i don't know how we would do it but we would do it <laughs> yeah so talk talk about that too do you think your um your ear for and enjoying other music helps you making your R&B and hip hop music. Cause you yeah, listen to such wide range of stuff, heavy metal, the Beatles, that's like, and hip hop, they're all two total, three totally different things. Yeah, definitely. Like um, around middle school, I started like being around different races and, you know, different people. So, you know, you know, if I share my music taste with like, one of my black friends, they're going to be like, oh, that's that white shit. That's that white shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I was definitely like in middle school, I was more comfortable. So, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Um, Where where do you see your career, let's say, a year from now? Or where would you want your career to be a year from today? Um, Definitely not mainstream. You know, it, it definitely takes time to do that. But I see myself um probably doing shows, probably doing shows. Yeah, I like I like how you said that too, because um, you know, at least you have like a realistic expectation of you know, unless you drop one song and because it only does take one song. I tell everybody that, right? It takes one song to blow up unless you like drop that one song. But for most artists, it's like a you know, you you got to go up levels. So I like I like your answer on that because it's at least like realistic. You know what I mean? Right. So um, what? You already, like I said, you dropped the EP this year, nine singles already. What can people watching this expect from you next? And what can any of your fans expect from you? Well, if you listen to me like frequently, you know that I go to like slow music and hard music and back to slow music. Um, But, you know, Halloween time coming around. So you can definitely expect some more hard stuff from me, some trap, you know, the Detroit sound. You know, yeah, I don't make Detroit music part two. Yeah, talk talk about that. Talk about that single. Um, I don't make Detroit music. Where where did that name come from? And like I said, when I heard it, I, I loved the song. I thought it was great. Um, like a lot of people around me tell me to make like the Detroit sound and stuff. And I'm not gonna say I don't enjoy doing it, but I just want to be different coming out of like yeah Michigan and stuff. So yeah, so I just said I don't make Detroit music and dropped the Detroit song, you know. <laughs> yeah, the, I really enjoyed it, though. I thought you, you nailed it on the head, like, Appreciate the sound, it. everything, and the shit's hard, too. Yeah. Do you, do you have, uh, do you ever struggle with, like, 
with that because you know that's what's making most people out of Detroit pop right now. Like, um, you know, that's because inside you probably that's not what you want to be doing, right? Yeah, but it really comes natural because like like hanging around my brothers growing up, like that's all I heard was Detroit stuff. So I definitely know how to ride on that type of flow and stuff. So yeah, it comes natural. It's just like I wouldn't do it like long term. Yeah, I think that's dope too. Like it comes natural to you because even if you're say that song popped right right at least other people people could enjoy that song and then they could go check out your other shit and be like wow this kid's super talented like right. he has all sorts of different kind of music yeah i feel it yeah so um how how uh how did the 884 come explain that uh i really i really just took it from uh my friend phobia i really just took it from him um do you know but where that came from from him? He tells me it just came like spiritually for real. That's awesome then, though. But when I when I put my name on it, then I started seeing 884. It's like I saw 884 on a on a, a little fortune cookie. I saw 884 on um like on my Instagram reels, like the views. I saw 884. So like, yeah, it just started the happening. Fortune cookie is crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> And then my brother played it on the lottery too. He ain't, I don't know if he won it, but he played it on the lottery. Yeah. That's dope, bro. Um, yeah, before we get out of here, if there's anything else uh you want to say, and also um if you could just let everybody know where to find your music and if you want to just spell out like uh your social media and your artist name. Um every social media I'm um, under 884, 84V. And then um on Snapchat, um they dot eight eight four. And all I gotta say for real is keep keep spreading the love, man, because it's a small world. We all all we got is each other, so yeah, that's true. I agree with you too. And for anyone that's watching this, it's eight eight four V A Y. Yep. Perfect. And um yeah, I just want to thank you for coming on, bro. Um Thanks I for really, that. really yeah, of course. I really enjoyed your music and um I think you're super talented, and I think if, you know, the right person sees this and gets a hold of your music, uh, they'll see that too. Yep, they definitely will. Definitely will. I appreciate that, bro. Um, Stay safe. I wish you all the best, and um, I'll be dropping this on Friday, and uh, we'll start your promotion and everything, and um, I'll put your songs on the playlist, and if there's anything else you need from us, uh, I tell every under artist, underground artist this, and I mean that. Like, once you're on the show, bro, we're locked in, so, like, even in the future, if you drop something, you're like, and you send it to me, you're like, yo, can you post this up? Like, we don't charge nothing, so. All right, I really appreciate that. Yeah, of course, bro. 